Hi guys, it's Kayla here again, back with the Creative Podcast, and we have a very special guest today. Go ahead, introduce yourself. Hi guys, my name is Brianna. I am Kayla's friend, and I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> oh my gosh, we love her. Okay, um, so the opening line for this week's episode is, life is at its sweetest when it's happening too fast to post it. Uh, that's another quote from me personally. I don't know. I just thought of this at work and it's kind of because I was feeling pressure to like post more and like keep up to date on my Instagram and everything. But honestly, life has just been happening too fast for me to post it all. And that's okay. You know, I'll get to it when I get to it. So with that being said, Remember to like this podcast, you know, subscribe, review it on Apple Apple Podcasts and Spotify um, and follow me on my socials. They're always in the description below. So let's get into the girl talk. Okay, so we're going to start off with our highs and lows and the to do's. So, of course, I'm going to let my guest go first. <laughs> go ahead, Brianna, with your highs. <laughs> I guess a high would probably be I mean, it wasn't this week, but I turned 21. We love that for her. <laughs> She's legal, legal. She's legal, legal. I'm legal, legal. Um, it was really fun. I was in Georgia. I wish you were with me. <laughs> I was in Georgia with three of my friends and yeah we went to six flags and and if i'm being honest like yeah i got drunk at night like it was fun i love that <laughs> and i threw up oh my god in the airbnb Aww. um did your friend hold your hair back yeah she she tied up my hair she changed my shirt Aww. she cleaned up the vomit all night long because she only got like she didn't even she was super responsible mm-hmm she was giving you vibes like (laughs) um but I feel like I had to but don't don't listen to me but oh my gosh you're 21 (laughs) like you could definitely do that okay and yeah it was like a fun like new leaf oh and I was very scared to get drunk no oh (laughs) (laughs) just to turn 21 like a mental thing oh but we could get into that yeah we'll get into that we'll get into that okay um not much has been going on recently, honestly, but I can say my recent high has been taking my faux locks out. I know, I know, I was excited about taking them out, I mean, about getting them in the first place, and I was talking about it for weeks, but there's just a point where it was, like, harder to keep up with the faux locks than it was to keep up with my own hair, so I was just like, oh, they gotta go, so I spent all day last Saturday just taking them out and then I spent Sunday morning washing my hair and I just feel like I'm like back to me you know like not so much tension on the scalp Mm -hmm, mm mm-hmm very relaxed she's free she's blowing in the wind did you ever get like a headache from it yeah like when I first got Mm -hmm. it done it was like super super tight and you know you sleep like this you're like (laughs) (laughs) it's a brow lift (laughs) yeah yeah it's it's difficult at first but um it got a little bit better and then I liked it and then I was like okay I'm sick of this Mm -hmm. so happy to get back to my fro um do you want to go with your lows um I would probably say uh I kind of when we got back from the trip I kind of got, I had a very low moment, Mm -hmm. um, because if I'm being honest and we're going to talk about it, me and you, like, I wasn't taking my medication, Mm -hmm. my antidepressants regularly, I would pick and choose which one I wanted to take, was not taking at the same time, I was eating really bad on the trip, Mm -hmm. um, and then you get that, like, trip high and then that trip low, Mm -hmm coming back and it's like it was not fun it was not I just was you know sleeping all day Mm -hmm. and then I would have maybe like some chips like it was a it was kind of if I'm being honest like it was a depressive episode how do you say it yeah depressive episode Mm -hmm. and it Mm -hmm. was scary and my sister she literally she was like she set on um alarms on my phone she like was like 
you have to take your pill at this time. Like, she really helped me. Mm -hmm. And it's good to have people like that in your life. But I guess that was, like, the low. Getting Mm -hmm. into that headspace and being, like... Because I I was taking my medication consistently for a while. And I was like, I'm fine now. Mm -hmm. And that's just not how it works. Yeah. And then when you stop and then, you know, like I said, eating bad and um going to bed at weird like when your your routine is thrown off on top of that not taking them like of course your brain's gonna suffer Mm -hmm. so i guess that because it was just scary and not fun yeah yeah that makes sense the post-trip like trying to roll back into your routine like you said it's hard and then you're just left with like a bit of a low bank account and a bunch of laundry (laughs) so much laundry so no i still have yet to put away my empty suitcase oh my like gosh. it's so no it's hard it's hard can't relate but it's hard <laughs> i feel like the uh the high of the trip though it kind of makes it worth it i guess yes and like the memories but then you're just like Ugh, yeah. i gotta get back to like real life going to work yeah yeah it's hard but i will say everything is connected whether you and like you know when alcohol is involved like things you don't normally do like Mm -hmm. have a sprite for breakfast like (laughs) you know like it all it's it's all like connected Mm -hmm. you put what you put in you get out that's true that's true 100 percent. yeah i feel like you do go a little bit crazy on trips sprite for breakfast (laughs) or like candy for dinner Mm -hmm. yeah or just like pasta and like burgers um, fries amusement park food Mm -hmm. yes it's all connected like you're gonna be like either constipated or like pooping a lot (laughs) bloated bloated tired sluggish pimples like yeah when you come back pimples it just hits you yeah the post-trip acne not only that from like eating but also from like the change in your environment the weather the oh yes just like all of it yeah it does take a toll georgia was really humid Mm. Um, but I feel like that's where the prep comes in in your everyday life. Mm -hmm. Like, if every day you have a routine of taking your medication at the same time, or at least as close to it as you can, and, you know, getting up at around the same time, Mm -hmm. just, that's, like, preparation. Staying ready so you don't have to get ready. Yeah, that's true. Having, like, they say systems, like, having systems in place so then you could come back to that and be like okay this is what I normally do Mm -hmm. so like let me try and yeah that makes sense and it doesn't have to be perfect Mm -hmm. it's just like an effort to just structure yeah I feel like humans we need that a little bit we do in order to thrive (laughs) stupid mental health walks yes (laughs) I feel like when people hear the words like routine and structure and balance like they're like oh it has to be intense it Mm -hmm. has to be but it could it's the smallest things making sure you brush your teeth before you go to bed Mm -hmm. or like you know showering or uh you know changing your sheets like just eating eating on yeah we were just talking about we have to feed ourselves as adults like we there's no like mom feeding you anymore like Mm -hmm. just being being your own mom now being your own mom yeah. that's so good oh my gosh no one's gonna care more than yeah. you that's for you true. oh my gosh <laughs> we love this we love this <laughs> okay um shoot that was so good <laughs> how do i follow up with that have, oh i went on a tangent <laughs> oh my gosh it's fine do like that's future? literally <laughs> like, you have a future in podcasting she has a future in podcasting anything talking <laughs> You'd be amazing at it. You yeah, honestly would. Thank you. Um, okay, my lows are kind of feeling. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. She like tapped my leg. <laughs> if you're not seeing this visually, um, my lows have been like I've just been feeling a little bit like mentally and emotionally like weaker. I don't know. I feel like I usually keep up like this. I have to be strong kind of mindset all the time and like I have to like think things through for the best of like for the betterment of like myself and others and stuff like that but 
I feel like recently I've just been so like I don't know not drained but like I don't feel like being strong Mm. because it's just exhausting that yeah that was powerful (laughs) (laughs) it is it's exhausting to like I don't know to like take like you said take care of yourself but then also like make sure that you're making good decisions for yourself and make sure that being productive at work yeah that you're like being productive at work and like doing the best that you can there and it's just like when it comes to things I don't know when it comes to things that are like personal I just get kind of lazy I feel like because like with personal relationships and stuff I'm just like like I've been trying to be like mentally and emotionally strong in so many other areas with like Mm -hmm. content creation and like I guess my spirituality and like working Mm. and stuff like that I feel like with like relationships with like friends family romantic (laughs) uh, I'm just like uh, I don't feel like being that strong and I feel like it can kind of like negatively impact my relationships sometimes because I don't know I'm not like I feel like I'm not putting in my best effort, but that's just how I've been feeling recently. I don't know if that's actually true or if it's just in my head, you know? Sometimes you don't feel like doing it all. Mm -hmm. And it feels like, when is it my turn to just veg out on the couch and not have to do life today? Mm -hmm. Like, it feels like a never-ending me having to be strong, like me having to be productive. Like, when can I just not have any responsibilities? Yeah. But it, te- it, you know, I guess, you know, progress, not perfection. Mm-hmm. Like, not being like, okay, today well, I wasn't super productive at work, mm-hmm. but I'm going to go home and do a face mask or like, tomorrow I'm gonna be really productive but then maybe have mac and cheese like for dinner like it's okay if it's not perfect every day yeah I needed that yeah and you have so much like doing helping your siblings paying your bills you work you go you volunteer at church (laughs) relationships with friends doing social media on yeah. top of it that's true i do have a lot going on a lot and it's like when is it kayla's turn to to, out on the couch mm-hmm. you're right to just like not be so perfect when is it time to be not billboard kayla oh the billboard was great though billboard kayla that's a good that's a really good way to like describe like the idea of myself just like doing it all and like being perfect at everything billboard kayla you don't have to be billboard kayla oh my gosh i feel like i always have to be billboard kayla it's like beyonce kayla yeah and it's like i'm okay like you like i could take some time Mm mm-hmm yeah i've been thinking of just like taking a week off from work yes yeah. Life is long but short. Yeah. Yeah. And the, it will still go, like, you're needed, but life will still go on if you're not there for a week. You're right. I f- that sounded yeah. terrible. But no, <laughs> no, that makes sense. Because, like, I feel like, I don't know, it's really weird and, like, self-centered of me to be like, oh, if I'm not, like, involved and I'm not, like, helping or whatever then like just things aren't gonna move and things aren't gonna progress but like I think we were talking about this I don't remember when but we were just like like you said it you were like life is like happening whether Uh, you're like a part of it or not life is happening with or without yes yes like the other day it was my sister's birthday like I was telling you and they had a birthday party for her and I was at work like while the party started and then I came and like the party was already happening and there were people already there and I felt so out of place because usually 
I'm the big sister so I'm like helping and like helping my mom set up and like doing whatever you know with the kids and like making sure that everyone's like enjoying themselves and I was telling my therapist it felt so weird to just like show up and everything was like already done and all I had to do was like sit and eat and like relax and she was saying like you say it feels weird but it's literally just like you not being used to like relaxing and just like taking a break you know like not feeling that pressure to like move around and do things all the time um and I'm sure part of that comes from being the oldest yeah yeah um sort of watching your like you don't want to watch your mom do everything or like just be in the back like take a backseat role like I'm sure you consciously wanted to step up Mm -hmm. and then you that you know you have that like nature of being like all right we got to do this we got to do that Mm -hmm. like and um like my sister like when with my mom's like mental health struggles like she has the same issue as you like letting go Mm -hmm. and being like all right I'm not the mom like I'm not everything has to fall on me (laughs) yeah yeah and don't feel guilty either. I no, I felt so guilty just like sitting on the couch and like eating like I was mm-hmm. a guest. Like I was telling my therapist like I felt like I was a guest and I never feel like I'm a guest. I feel like I'm like the a part host. of the hosting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But ugh, gosh, sometimes you just have to be the guest. Yes. You just have to sit down and just like eat it's, the food and like relax. It, you it's like you have mom guilt. I do. But it it's like billboard kayla guilt like yeah. if i'm not always billboard kayla then i'm less than oh my god and you're not we're healing today brianna we're healing today <laughs> oh my gosh that gave me chills <laughs> that was so good i needed that okay okay <laughs> um to do's <laughs> um just in life or or just like could they be little in little big in life short term long term whatever you feel like is like on your mind that you want to do for like yourself um i've been really wanting to try to get a bikini wax oh <laughs> <laughs> for the love of god like i cannot do the like trimming and shaving like it's hard Mm -hmm. i can't get all back there and Mm -hmm. the crevices it's a lot it's a lot of work and you know it would be nice to just be smooth Mm -hmm. for a while a minute well you do that you let me know how it goes because i'm scared okay (laughs) um my sister does them consistently really she likes them Mm -hmm. she's strong (laughs) she i thank her for her service (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shoot. <laughs> Dropping the iPad. Um, I need to vacuum my room. Oh my gosh. No, you don't. It's literally like spick and span in here. <laughs> if you could see my room. Gosh. That's amazing, though. What? Kudos to you. What? For wanting to oh. get a bikini wax. <laughs> really? I'm, I'm really scared. I don't think I... I don't know. It's also like, will they judge my badge? Yeah. Will they... I feel like they do low key. Yeah. Or they take a look. Well, they're like they have to. Yeah. They have to look. I mean, you'd hope that they look. But but I feel like okay, they're looking. There's okay, you could be looking, but then there's like taking a look like, mm-hmm. like examining. Yeah. I don't know, you let me know. <laughs> <laughs> um what's my what I wrote it down. <laughs> I'm like, what's my to do? Um oh okay um so like kind of speaking of like everything that we were just talking about I do want to kind of set aside a little bit more time for myself this upcoming week and just like enjoy the 4th of July weekend because I finally I have another Monday off we love that so it's gonna be a very long weekend um and hopefully I can just like veg out like you said yes watch Stranger Things because the new episodes are gonna come out friday so that's like all in the same weekend i've literally watched one episode so far (laughs) like literally no pressure but i'm just insane and i have to like fangirl over things um i could make a deal (laughs) with with god (laughs) you didn't get it to swap my laces be running up that road 
was going to say hill. Oh, it is hill. It is run, it's running up that road and then running up that hill. And, um. <laughs> don't I hope I don't get us. copyrighted. Oh my god, that'd be funny. <laughs> no, probably not. They're not that bad on um, what is this? Spotify, <laughs> Apple. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that. Just having like relaxation time. Just me. Mm-hmm. And yeah. don't worry about like what Kennedy is doing or what. Because I do that all the time, <laughs> Kaylin. Kaylin. Yeah, or- I do that all the time. Mm-hmm. Like especially when it's holidays and stuff, I feel bad for like taking a step back and like not trying to like do activities with them and like because I used to do stuff like that Aww. like all the time. But and there's a difference between stepping back and like not doing anything at all like mm-hmm. by all means like do little like sparklers with them or like firework like yeah do something but nothing strenuous like mm-hmm. you don't have to be like absent but just like you know inc- include yourself mm-hmm. in it don't be like all right this is for them like i'm taking them out or mm-hmm. be like this is for all of us i'm included yeah. they're just not really old enough to do that yeah but when the time comes but like have your mom take the reins or like your grandma you said that like be included in the in the in the blob in the group oh mm-hmm. uh, yeah I feel like I've been struggling with that for like the past year just like figuring out like my place mm-hmm. I guess like not always taking the reins but then also trying to include myself but then also trying to like take time to myself without being absent it's like yeah. it's so weird like I took Kennedy out for her birthday, Uh and, like, it was just, like, a girl's day, and, like, I took her to Build-A-Bear, and, like, we went to the mall, we got pretzels, we, like, we did a whole thing, you know, and it felt good, because I felt like we were actually hanging out, and it wasn't like I I was taking her Mm -hmm. around for her birthday, it, like, didn't feel like that, it didn't feel like it was, like, I don't know, like, a chore Mm -hmm. or whatever, like, me taking care of her, um, which was really fun and different. (laughs) Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next, the next segment, which is um, girl talk. <laughs> Just girl talk. Ooh. We're we're talking relationships. We're talking what it's like to be in your twenties. We're talking boundaries, people pleasing, being consistent, showing up for yourself, and all of the above. Okay, so. The first thing we're going to talk about is body hair and expectations around that. Um, <laughs> how do you feel about the pressures of body hair? Speaking of bikini waxes, yes, you know, good segue. Mm-hmm. Um, I always felt like a woman has to have everything shaped, mm-hmm. everything perfect. Only the hair on, like, your head, your eyebrows, like, is acceptable. Mm -hmm. And I hate that expectation. Like, I feel like maintenance sometimes is good. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to, you know, maybe shave, you know, down there. Not even shave, like, trim a little if it's getting long. (laughs) But, um... It's a forest. (laughs) You know... If you, but even if you, I don't know, I just wish that, and if I'm being honest, I even do it too. Like, if I see a woman who's very, um, I don't know the word for it, but like a woman who grows their armpit hair and doesn't Mm -hmm. care, like, my first thought will be like, (gasps) like, oh. What is she doing? Yeah. And like, because it's not us, it's just how we're. Yeah, Taught. it's societal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like all of the all of the things that we've been taught over the years and all of the things that people have told us and that the freaking razor companies have showed us, you know, all of like the subconscious just like ingraining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. I think my initial thought too is like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> scandalous. Yeah. She's has armpit hair but then i'm like wait she has armpit hair like i have armpit hair too (laughs) everyone has armpit hair Mm -hmm. like that's literally normal um it's just like the freaking like 
male driven you know societal expectations just in the back of our head all the time just like be bald so your skin can be soft and caressable or whatever like what does that even mean yeah I feel that 100% I think I think when I first started shaving like my just like my leg hair I would feel like I had to like Mm -hmm. not even pressure from like men because I was like 11 or 12 years old like I didn't really care that much about what men thought about my leg hair but pressure from like family members <gasps> no yeah. way and I still get this too wait what? yes pressure from I'm so intrigued <laughs> yes pressure from female like family members like whenever I was wearing like a dress or a skirt or anything like showing my legs or whatever you know I feel like they would kind of look at me and be like you know if I had like a little bit of leg hair they'd be like you know like did you shave like why didn't you like that type of thing um and I remember last year and it it was like this whole like revelation for me um as you know last year I was in a relationship um exactly like sorry (laughs) no it's fine um and he was the type of person who was just like I don't really care if you have leg hair and Hmm. it became like a game where he was like I want to see how long your leg hair can get and I was like okay bet oh (laughs) that is so funny so I like grew out my leg hair for like maybe three months and over this time my grandma would just be like so you're just not gonna like shave (laughs) and she even bought me like a trimmer she's like I know how difficult it can be to you know shave so I bought you like a trimmer and I'm just like grandma I didn't need this but like thanks Thanks, but it's okay yeah I'm like living my life you know I just be like I'm not gonna you know and I feel like when I just decided I wanted to shave I just decided to shave because I felt like I wanted to and I felt like I would feel more confident having shaved legs and then that's just what I did and that's kind of what like I've been on like I decide when I want to shave not based off of like who I'm gonna see and like what they might think about my body hair and blah 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 but like how I personally feel like I know most of the time, I don't really care that much about my leg hair, but I personally feel better if my armpit hair is shaved, and that's just, like, a thing for me. Um, same thing with, like, down there hair. I'm just, like, it's not that big of a deal, but, like, personally for me to feel, I don't know, just, like, more comfortable, I prefer for it to be, like, pretty trimmed or pretty, like, closely shaven because I just feel more comfortable that way. Um, so, yeah, that's that's been a thing. It's been really weird like growing up with like female expectations to shave yeah because I think that maybe it's associated on a woman with like dirty yeah or like because it's like if I'm like men typically don't shave their armpits super or they might trim you know Mm -hmm. it's usually not Mm -hmm. um and their legs no um so i feel like it's more common and okay for a man to be like dirty like go, like getting his hands dirty like yeah and then a woman's like prissy and like yeah clean but it, in the house yes <laughs> but it has they there, there's just no correlation it's just what grows and what doesn't like mm-hmm. and i feel like aside from the hair on your head and stuff like it just it, it's it's not appreciated like I don't know it should I feel that if a woman had you know wants to not be a perfectly shaved naked morat like mm-hmm. it should be okay like yeah should, I don't know 100 percent 100 percent so yeah. you've never had like a female in your life be like oh like, um you should friends girlfriends mm-hmm. they've oh. like I, I know they didn't really mean anything by it mm-hmm. but they've like Cause there was a time when if I'm being like honest like down there like mm-hmm. <laughs> four is like uh-huh. and they would make jokes and they would like try and teach me how to shave because I didn't really have that mother figure mm-hmm. um and I didn't really care to do it yeah and 
I feel like if someone doesn't really care to do it, as long as you have at least somewhat good hygiene, it's okay. Yeah, like it shouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just remembering like in middle school, I remember this was like a few weeks that I was at my school because I changed schools like after this, shortly after. But um, in middle school, we had gym class. And I remember like I had a friend who would just kind of like make fun of girls for like having hair down there like in general and she just kind of like talked to me about like other girls having it and in the meantime I'm just like well I don't shave down there and it just like I got like so paranoid like changing like I didn't want to change in front of anyone especially her because I didn't want like anyone to see it and I was just like uh, you know mm-hmm. like and I'm like 12 years old and I'm still wearing like kitty underwear yes. you know and like the Barbie ones <laughs> yeah like the freaking Barbie or like I don't know like do you ever have the days of the week ones <laughs> I wish I wanted those. I would never keep up with it. I had like Care Bears ones. Oh my god, Care Bears. Yeah, it was a time. But I just felt like embarrassed one by my underwear because everyone else was wearing like pink for Mm -hmm. some reason, even though we were like 12 years old. And then the thing about like the body hair, it was just like, oh, I don't want anyone to see. So I don't remember exactly how I would change during those weeks, but I would like, I'd be like in the corner, like behind my backpack trying to change no i think i remember having my backpack like in front of me like on my arms and i'd legit be like changing behind my backpack um so bad so we love growth though and also i hear people like say stuff like oh if you're hairy on your armpits or down there um if they're like odor yeah it like the, traps the odor or yeah, whatever yeah I, I mean personally i haven't experienced that no as long as you just like wash with the right soap and maybe throw on some deodorant like mm-hmm. put on your fresh undies like yeah we'll use dove or you know we love dove in this mm-hmm. household yeah so cheap so reliable like just like you know get in there and it, like i feel like hair has nothing to do with the odor mm-hmm yeah. I hate that. That makes that would it's make me stigma. so mad. Because it's, it's like stigma. that odor, dirty hair. Mm-hmm. Get rid of it. Like it's yeah. the worst. Like And men can just be like, hey <laughs> you know? And whatever. Like my armpits right now, I'm just using it as an example, like they're shaped but they're a little prickly. Yeah. Like and it's been like two days since I shaded it. Like mm-hmm. I I sometimes like I don't know, like it doesn't have to be perfect, like Sometimes I just keep them shaved so, like, the deodorant balls, like, won't yeah. get in there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's, like, kind of the only reason. Mm-hmm. If it if, if humans didn't, you know, wear deodorant or if it wasn't super hot outside, like... That'd probably be... Yeah. Sometimes in the winter, I'm just like, hey. <laughs> it's, like, it's there to, like, protect you. Exactly. Like, it's not that's bad. That's the thing. Body yeah. hair is protect... It's literally protection against, like... The environment mm-hmm. and infections and everything and people are just like oh women no hair so what you want us to like die yeah. like what the heck <laughs> we're supposed to have hair like i got prickly legs right now me, we're oh feeling yeah, good. me too we're <laughs> feeling great <laughs> um i love that for us yeah hairy beasts um okay so the next thing relationships in your 20s uh, oh. not just romantic <laughs> I guess I want to say, like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, uh, like, it's okay to not do it mm-hmm. and... Do what? <laughs> I guess, Be specific. <laughs> <laughs> I guess everything. Mm-hmm. And also, like, not feel pressure to do anything. Yeah. And to say no. Like, it's okay to maybe, like just want to be friends with a guy or mm. I mean I am like I have friends that are in like serious long term committed relationships and then I compare myself like it's okay to be young and not in love like, you oh don't have, yeah you don't have to have that summer whirlwind romance that's true and that and it's like oh like it's okay mm-hmm. maybe I will and I saw a TikTok or something, and I'm not saying this correctly, 
so it was a little while ago but i have it saved somewhere on my phone and this woman went her whole life you know she dated and stuff she never had kids because she just never found someone that she cared to do it with Mm -hmm. and she but she never let that stop her she lived a very fulfilled life and then when she was like 80 something Mm -hmm. in the nursing home she was in she met the love of her life and they got married and then they lived you know till they were like in their 90s yeah and he was you know there by her side but she if you look at it she was still married i think it was like 10 years because like they were married in the early 80s and died you know sometime in the 90s Mm -hmm. in their 90s but like she was you know single or still dating or whatever in her 50s yeah in her 60s in her 70s -hmm. it's like what if she went her whole life miserable and sad yeah and what if she was like my biological clock like what if she was that wound that whole time the freaking don't get me started on the (laughs) biological clock because what does that even mean i hate it oh my gosh but she the, it was from the nursing home guy because mm-hmm. he, he was by her when she passed and so was her husband but she was like telling like you know in her last days she was like I still did everything and I still met the love of my life mm-hmm. like it's okay like I might be 40 mm-hmm. and I, it's okay and I still have 40 more years till yeah. I meet someone it's better to wait Mm -hmm. and be like okay i'm 21 and i'm single yeah it's it's okay (laughs) yes i freaking love that story (laughs) oh my god because when she was 60 she was still very far away Mm -hmm. from meeting it yeah yeah the love of her life but at the same time it's okay to date around and Mm -hmm. ask people out and like maybe have a one night stand like whatever you're into Mm -hmm. but it's okay if like you see some so many of celebrities friends like dating and getting married oh the baby pic oh my god so many people i know are pregnant what (laughs) not or like have had babies oh my god you know what i mean yeah like from high school yeah wow yeah i think you do kind of start to feel that pressure just as you get older like like you said the biological clock is ticking (laughs) when am i gonna get married when Mm -hmm. am i gonna have babies when am i gonna you know like all of that but like you said like you can't really put a time limit especially on like love or meeting the love of your life you know because it's you at the end of the day exactly and god or whatever religion you follow Mm -hmm. yeah wow i'm just thinking about that story because if you think about like when she was 50 mm-hmm. she was still so far away yeah and what if she was sad and miserable that whole time because people get like that yes they're just like oh i'm single ah, i don't have grandkids yet all of my uh, friends have grandkids yeah. you know yeah i see on instagram like even for the people that are doing it like, i'm very happy for you like mm-hmm. but like if you just if you're not it's okay yeah. And, like, also, I don't know. It's just don't feel like, okay, there was it also, like, being, having boundaries with men mm-hmm. so hard. Yeah. I, f- I don't know. Maybe it's not hard. I don't know. I just have a hard time saying no. No, I get that. Because I feel like as women, we're kind of, like raised to like see men in a certain light and like for them to be like authoritative towards us and we just kind Mm. of like are submissive and we say yes and we are we have to be like agreeable to be attractive and like we have to be submissive in a way to be seen as like easy to deal with because you know you don't want to be like too difficult for a man to like handle or whatever I feel like there is that expectation so it makes it hard to like put yourself first and to think about what you want first and to think about what you're feeling first and I feel like part of that is like us as women having to do that internal like reverse of our like mentality and like okay 
I have to think of myself and my feelings before I think of his and like what he wants and stuff like that like we have to do that on our own but then we also like men also have to put in the work and be like okay am I also seeking out what she wants am I asking her what she wants am I like respecting her as a person you know not as just like a woman in my life you know my girl yeah my girl who's supposed to like have this like I don't know god complex of Mm -hmm. me or some or something like that um which I feel like I've definitely been like learning a lot just like being single and like you know I'm like the flirty girl you know I'm I'm experimenting or whatever <laughs> with my singleness is, like you're you're 20 like um like we're both like around like we're the same we're at the same point like mm-hmm. this is like the time to do it yeah even if you are in a relationship this is the time to like experiment with different hobbies or mm-hmm. whatever stage you're in. it just you know what i think a lot of a lot of even friendships but relationships or marriages fail Mm -hmm. because when you get into a relationship I often think like oh this is a time where I can like take care of my man like cater Mm. to my man but I don't think that's what it means like I I think that's why because this is not Destiny's Child's care to you. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. But I didn't know if you knew the song. Yes. <laughs> Let me cater to no you. Because no one knows it. Yeah. It's not but cater I, to you. Yes. <laughs> but it's, it should be to people that, like, two holes coming together. Yeah. And then when it's not, like, when one person is catering to the other person more, it, it that's why I feel? I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, I, Yeah. I get what you're saying. It can be, like, unbalanced a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Like, I feel like there's, like, this toxic thing in relationships sometimes where it's, like, you're playing, like, hard to get a little bit. Yeah. Because you're, like, okay, they have to like me more than I like them because, like, and even I have this mentality sometimes. I'm, like, he has to like me more than I like him because if he likes me more than I like him, then, like... <laughs> Maybe I can, like, get a little bit more out of this. <laughs> it's a terrible, toxic mentality. And I'm trying to break it, okay? Mm-hmm. At least I'm aware of it now. Or, I realized this a couple days ago. <laughs> or, like, if, if he's more into me, like, he's not going to cheat. Yeah. Like, I have to be more, I have to be, yes. like, the whatever one. Like, having the upper hand mm-hmm. in the relationship. He has to be obsessed. Yes! Mm-hmm. Which is terrible, because it's, like, you're, so, like, and I know what it feels like to be in love or whatever and to like truly just value the other person and not because like you feel like they like you more or they or like you like them more or, you know like that type of thing but just to like I don't know just be, to like be good humans to yes. each other yes yeah yes get into a relationship not to like service the other person or be mm-hmm. like i need to buy him this like i need to do this for him like that's... or just to be serviced <sighs> mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah because i feel like i feel like it's a lot of like one or the other it's a lot of like the guy wants to be like i said served like a god or the girl wants to be like served like a goddess, you know, and like buy me the Birkin and <laughs> yes, that whole thing. and the roles of like yeah. buy me like the the Birk, like mm-hmm. treat me how like Drake would treat a woman, like exactly, yeah, exactly. And it like negatively impacts relationships on both ends because it's like the guy is thinking, oh, I have to have all this money and like do all this to like have a girlfriend yes. and be worthy and then the girl is thinking like oh I have to stay pristine and clean and shaved and, shaved. and yeah. always have my hair done and my nails done to be seen as like a valuable and like worthy enough woman when like neither is freaking true yeah oh when gosh. at the end of the day if you know you spend five dollars on parking and go to the beach oh my gosh that's more than spending like hundred bucks on like their purse or like you know yes because you can you can be with someone and they can buy you a Birkin and then take you and drop you off home and go 
sleep with someone else yeah. okay and be like okay i bought her the birkin but i'm sleeping with you know like mm-hmm. it's it's very skewed it's yeah. skewed thinking it's very toxic and it's like ingrained mm-hmm. just like the shaving it's just like ingrained yeah yeah from the freaking 50s the 50s messed us up man <laughs> <laughs> the freaking 50s 50s housewife and like breadwinner and like all of those like, gender roles here's just, your beer like yeah uh, like i made you dinner mm-hmm. and all of the kids are eating dinner and mm-hmm. i have to clean the whole house and did you have a good day at work and did you make money do you, are you paying the bill mm-hmm. yeah. and the woman not having any like knowledge of what's happening financially exactly and Ooh. going to her sewing clubs yep. or whatever with the other women and talking about their husbands and cheating on each other and all of the toxicity mm-hmm. but we're doing really good yes. because we're like We're trying really hard to break that. And I feel like generations before us, like our parents, they tried, but it didn't really go so well. (laughs) So here we are, you know, doing the heavy duty work. Yes. Putting in the effort. The Gen Z. The Gen Z. Me and my sister were talking about it this morning. I thought we were millennials. Oh, heavens no. (laughs) My sister was like, no. Um, my mom's a millennial. Yes. Mm-hmm. She said like 30s and 40s people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're, we're getting old. We're all getting old. Yes. We are. But we're doing good. Yes. I'm so proud of us. Yeah. Uh, what What did we have? Oh, what does it mean to be in your 20s? What do okay. you think that means to you? It means failure. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Just throw on the towel. <laughs> you hit 20, it's over. Okay, I saw okay another TikTok, but it was so good. The mm-hmm. girl was like, "Now is the time to not be perfect." Ooh, yeah, yeah. And then the thirties is like, now you know how to pick yourself up. They say you thrive most in your thirties. Thirty and thriving. Thirty, 30 flirty, thriving. and thrive. Or thirty. I don't know the saying. <laughs> We're just winging it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah, they do say that. And I always had this plan, like, okay, by now, I'm going to be graduated from college, which I want to talk about. And, Mm. like, um, I'm going to be graduated from college. I'm going to have a boyfriend. I'm going to get married at 25, Mm. have my first kid at 27. Mm -hmm. When it's like, I don't even know if I'm going to have a kid at 37. Like, my yeah. my oldest cousin, or yeah, she's my oldest cousin Jennifer. Mm-hmm. She, um, you know, twenties, thirties, lived life, dated around. Like, she got married and had her daughter Giselle. Like, uh, I don't know exactly how old she was, but she was like maybe thirty nine, thirty eight, mm. like. Which is, and she, her daughter has the best life. Like mm-hmm. she's fulfilled, as far as I know, in her life. Like she yeah. works out. But what if she had Giselle at twenty eight? Mm-hmm. Like, and it, it's crazy because like at twenty eight, someone would probably be like, "Oh, I'm doomed." Like, but you have still maybe like ten years. Like, I don't yeah. know how to explain it. No, I hear what you're saying. Like she was able to live life. I feel like you. Like, in your early 20s, you're expected to, like, live your life Mm -hmm. and travel and, like, do all of the, like, single 20-year-old things. But where is the money? Where are the funds? Where? (laughs) Where is the money to live life? I don't get to live life in this economy. Gas is $5 a gallon. (laughs) We're not going anywhere. Our parents are also scared and struggling. Exactly. (laughs) So it's like, um how am I expected to go live my life life? like I so it's like okay you're supposed to live your life in your early 20s and then like you said you have the idea that you're gonna like settle down in your late 20s but like you didn't have time to do anything or live or like enjoy experiences just like as an individual person and you don't even finish developing until you're like 24 really yeah like your brain doesn't start finish developing until like mid 20s wow and men it's like later 20s yeah so it's like what are you (laughs) 
Like, I could not imagine myself with a child. Like, what no. am I... What? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I feel you 100%. Like, that's amazing that she was able to just, like... Yeah. She knew, like, what she wanted. Mm-hmm. And I feel like so many people just, like, fall into the pressure of just, like okay, this is when I'm supposed to do things and their parents might pressure them and be like, I want grandkids. I feel like, ooh, I feel like that's super common mm-hmm. in like, um, like immigrant families or like, um, like Caribbean households and stuff like that. Just from the people that I've like known, I'm not Caribbean or, I'm an, Im- or an immigrant, but just like from having relationships with people and like hearing how their family is. Like even with my past relationship, my my ex's mom would be like um so marriage like shut up yeah like you were like 19 yeah and i was like i was like 18 when we met you know and like his sister would be like you know like what are you guys thinking like plans wise you know and it put like pressure on us to like and it put pressure on me and I even like almost fell into it where I was like should we be moving in together does he need to be trying to ask me to marry like what <laughs> like why am I thinking this I'm literally 20 years old like I I'm not ready for this in any way shape or form but I feel like that pressure is just there lingering all the time and don't fall victim to that like yes it's it's hard and if you never want to have kids Mm -hmm. i also have two cousins my dad's um nephews yeah Mm -hmm. my dad's like i don't know that's it um they were like we don't want kids yeah and my cousin john like he moved to florida like he goes to concerts he he's like i don't want it Mm -hmm. or sorry my cousin will he goes he moved to florida he goes to concerts like he didn't want it same Mm -hmm. with my cousin john like he just didn't care to do it. Yeah. And I have other cousins who have a lot of kids. Like, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Especially as a woman. Like, it's oh, okay yeah. to not have kids as a woman. Ooh. I feel like people... Ugh, I feel like people look at women who don't want to have kids as, like, a witch. Or, like, like how could why? you not? Like, you don't have a maternal bone in your body. Yes. Like, there's no urge for you to have a child. Like, just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I have to have kids. Like... Yeah, there was a show that I was watching, um, The Ultimatum. I don't know if you saw it. I've heard of it. It's oh interesting. My God. Yes. <laughs> um, but I talked about it on the podcast already. So if you want to hear about that, it's in the last episode. <laughs> um, me breaking it down. But there's this one lady on there. Um, this guy like that she's dating. He wants to marry her, but he wants to have kids. And she's like, I'm not really sure if I want to have kids. Like, you know, the thing with, like, the changes with my body. I'm not sure how I'd feel about that. Like, I don't know if I'd make, like, a good mother and all of that. And he's just like, but I want to have kids. And, like, so he ended up proposing to her. But, like, I, I don't know. It was just, like, a really weird dynamic between the two of them. And I almost felt like he, like, just wants to, like, pressure her into having kids with him and she's just like I'm not sure like if you would be there and like supportive enough for me to have kids with you it's just like a whole thing and I feel like people can get really like I don't know judgmental especially like family members and stuff about like women having kids like when are you gonna have babies where are my grandkids like when are you gonna you know that type of thing and it's just kind of hard like you said to just say no and be like that's not what I want, you know? Yeah. Just don't listen to the pressures. Like, mm-hmm. It's hard. Again, the world will go around. The world will. <laughs> it will keep spinning. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, You want to do confidence or boundaries? Oh. I have a lot to say on boundaries. Okay. But nothing at all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel your heart is pulling you more towards? I have a lot to say because okay. Wait, Was it? Okay, we had to take a little free break, but we're good now. <laughs> boundaries. How do you feel about your boundaries? Okay. I just don't know what they are. Mhm. And I realized I had a problem when yesterday, 
was it yesterday? Oh my god, it was just yesterday. Okay. At work, sometimes things feel like so far away or so close, even though it's just time is. Not yeah, because <laughs> it feels like this happened a week ago, but it was yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. I was trying. I always try to escape work mm-hmm. and just not have everyone like right as I'm trying to leave, people just catch me. Ugh, it's so annoying. Yeah. Um, so I was trying to like have my lunchbox, like. And I was like ready to go, and um, this guy Gerald mm-hmm. um, stopped me, and like he's always been friendly with me, but I knew he was a bit older, and I I was like, well, he's just being nice because I'm new, mm-hmm. and um, he stopped me, and um, you know I think he's a really nice guy, he's really good at his job, but I am not, you know into him like that or attracted to him Mm -hmm. i found out he's 26 so yeah he's like older a bit so i didn't think he would want to ask for my number but that's fine to shoot your shot that's not he was really respectful like nothing was bad about that but i said yes Mm -hmm. to giving him my number and i didn't think it was you know a bad did i really want to no Mm -hmm. but and then I got home and I told my sister and she, my sister and my dad, because my dad was listening because he was in the kitchen. He didn't like, he, they didn't think I gave him my number because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, a guy asked for my number. I was like making jokes. I was like, I'm a hot commodity. Like you guys better watch out. Like yeah. I was just making jokes. And then he texted me and he was like, you're a little cutie. Like want to like hang out. And then my, I, I didn't even finish like what he sent me. Mm-hmm. And my sister was like, wait, you gave it to him? Mm-hmm. And she, w- her and my dad were like, you, like, are you dumb? Like, you didn't want to give him your number. Why didn't you say no? Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? Wait, I could have said no. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And then, like, even, I don't know, I've had, like, experiences with, like, friends or with any where I just really want to say no mm-hmm. or to not do something but I can't mm. I just like I don't but what even like what is a boundary like how do you do it so yeah <laughs> I see what you mean I think at first well okay let me ask you this did you feel like uncomfortable when he asked you <laughs> oh I mean, I guess a little just because of, like, nerves. Like, oh, mm-hmm. great. Like, mm-hmm. a guy, like, uh, asking for your mm-hmm. number. But not from him, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. I see what you mean. It's like... Did I want him to have it? Not really. Yeah. Like, I think you have to kind of think about, like... I don't know. You're like, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Like, boundaries are hard. Yeah. But I feel like what how I kind of think of it is like, do I want to deal with this now or do I want to deal <gasps> with it later? Oh, wow. Like, in that... that situation, my immediate thought would be, do I see myself actually wanting to talk to him? Do I feel like this is going to become, like, a problem that I'm going to have to deal with later? Like, am I going to have to feel like I want to, like, avoid him at work? Like, is it going to be awkward? Is it going to make me uncomfortable? You know, I feel like those kind of things kind of go in my brain first. And then that kind of dictates, like, what I feel like I want to do going forward. And this is with, like, anyone. With, like, friends and stuff, like... If I feel like, if I feel like I'm like drained and I'm like tired and someone asks me to hang out, then I'm just like, okay, but how am I going to feel like after I hang out? Like, am I going to feel like completely like defeated or am I going to feel like I had a good time and I had fun? And if I feel like I'm just going to be like dead, then that kind of determines whether or not I say like yes or no. If that makes any sense. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I heard a good way to do it is, like, look at your time as money. Like, you can also look at yourself in that way, but not it, not 
as money is valuable. Like, look at your time as valuable, yeah. too. Like, your time is just as valuable as the person who's asking you to do the favor. Yes. When they could do it, too. Like, we, we both have just as much time in the day. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have to put that on me. Everyone has 24 yes. hours. And you get to decide how you want to spend your time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree 100%. There was one time... Um, I went to this like lagoon thing mm-hmm. with my friends, and I like uh, I I had this like ring that was my grandma's, but it wasn't like her wedding ring. It was just like a little gold like band that she bought for herself that mm-hmm. was cheap and like she would wear. She just liked it, and she, I just liked that about her. Like she bought it, like that was cool. So I would wear it because it happened to fit me. Mm-hmm. Like, and then I jumped in the lagoon and all that, and I lost. Mm-hmm. And I, I know my grandmother, like, she would be like, it's okay. Like, I just know that because she, she was just like that. But I just felt, like, so sad about it. And I was, like, crying in the lagoon. Like, I was very sad. And then after, like, I, my friends, like, they calmed me down. We were in the car. And she's like, one of my friends, she's like, do you want to go to the mall? Mm-hmm. And, like, um, my guy friend that was there, he was like, sure, like, and then she was like, sure, like, they put gas in the car. I was just, like, looking out the window. I was like, I really don't want to go to the mall. Mm-hmm. But I was like, sure, I'll go. And the whole time I was, like, dragging myself. Like, yeah. When they were thinking this will be great, like, to yeah. make her feel better. But, like, or even, I don't know, like, it's okay to say no. And mm-hmm. it's, like, hard. Yeah. And, like, the people. Can you talk about the allergic reaction? Like, how I kept. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, girl. <laughs> Don't get me started. Okay, so we... I keep, like, talking about myself. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> we're literally oh. here to talk about ourselves. Okay. Like, this is what the people want. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, when was this? Like, a month ago at this point? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. This was, like, a month ago. So we had a picnic with our friends. I mentioned it a couple times on the podcast, like, how I was preparing for it, and I was really excited. Um, but I feel like I didn't really talk about it after the fact, um, just kind of, like, out of respect for Brianna. Like, I didn't want to tell the story of the picnic and, like, whatever. So um, we we had this strawberry picnic. You know, everyone came together. Everyone brought little dishes and things that were all, like, strawberry-themed. Everything had, like, strawberries in it, and it was a whole thing. Um, but Brianna's allergic to nuts, like, any kind of nut right only almonds it's weird okay um so she's allergic to almonds no just not oh not (laughs) almonds but everything else every every other nut besides almonds she's allergic to so we had this like cheesecake thing that one of the girls at the picnic made stella yes stella she homemade this she's like in culinary school she it was it was good but it was made with cashew yeah. milk i think um and cashews is like the number one one of the number ones that i'm like most allergic to. <laughs> yeah and we obviously didn't realize that so brianna's just like eating the cheesecake you know it's a little bit melted but we're all like this is tasty and we're like this is good you know um and she just like kind of goes quiet and i notice and i'm like looking at her you are you did i was like staring at you no, <laughs> yeah really? i noticed you were like quietly like and i was just like um i just like oh, i feel like i didn't know that <laughs> yeah like, before i even said anything yeah really? I, I have like sensitivities towards oh, people sometimes and i'm just okay. like yeah a little bit it's kind of annoying and exhausting but like whatever yeah, another <laughs> blessing and a curse another blessing and a curse so i'm like kind of keying in on her and then she what did you say you were just like Sorry, is there like nuts in, mm-hmm. in something and then i, was, I told you yeah i was more like oh, <laughs> i was more like oh no it's fine I can go back. it still looks great <laughs> um, I was more trying to just be like, okay, like, yeah, like, is there nuts in something? And then when she said that, my heart kind of like dropped, and I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I instantly got nervous, and then I was just like, are you okay? Like, how are you feeling? And then you're just like, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. fine. I'm just gonna. She gets up. 
And I walk, she walks away and she's like, I just need a minute. Yeah. And I'm like, a, a minute, my ass. Like, <laughs> you need a freaking minute. And I'm like, <laughs> in front of everyone, <laughs> everyone else is just like chatting and like eating. And I'm just like, oh, it was fine. Huh? Like everyone else was fine. Yeah. Everyone oh, okay. else, like no one else was even noticing what oh, was going really? on entirely. Okay. Until I was like, um, this is not a time for people pleasing, Brianna. <laughs> And then everyone's just like right. looking at us. <laughs> like, it's whoa. Because no one else knew, I feel, but you and Erica. Yeah, that like, she was allergic. Um, no, no, that, and also, like, I feel like you just knew that that's what was the first thing on my mind. Yeah. That's why, like, you followed me and, like, also the medical side, but, like, that, you were like, Brianna? Mm hmm. Like, I, I knew that you were trying to, yeah. like, people please mm-hmm. a little bit in that moment. Yeah. I felt like you... Oh, no. <laughs> I have a charger. It's fine. Okay. It'll keep going. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, I, I felt that you felt it, like mm-hmm. the people please. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and it just, I don't know, I got, like, angry, I'm like, what the heck, <laughs> you're like, you're in danger, <laughs> like, we need to figure this out, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I was, like, internally panicking a little bit, but it just kind of, like, came out in that way, and then I also felt bad, because I was like, oh no, like, what if she didn't want everyone to, like, be involved in, like, everything, and I just, like, blurted it out, <laughs> but it was also me, like, just, I think it was, like, my maternal, just, like, are you okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like freaking out. That's another like that. It was good that that happened. That you followed me, but that's also your maternal side. Yeah. Which is good and bad, but that's yeah. another. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Remember the vomiting? That was oh, yeah. so funny. It was not that funny. I was. I was like. <laughs> Yeah, so I ended up, like, following her with a cup of water, and she was just like, you know, things are swelling and, like, itching, and, you know, things are uncomfortable right now. Um, So our other friend, Erica, who's also been on the podcast, um, she came over, and she, like, offered to take her to the hospital and everything, and then things just got progressively worse, but it ended up, like, subsiding, Mm -hmm. and things ended up being fine, and you took, what, like, Benadryl or something? Mm -hmm so she's she's good today she's she's here with us thank god um but we were definitely scared for you like after you left we were just like um should we leave (laughs) we were like this this doesn't feel right we were like all scared we were like i hope she's okay like i hope she's not like gonna die because that would be really bad like that would be terrible um yeah we were all like just kind of sitting silently um and then this weird cat came up to us really kind of yeah like i have pictures it kind of just like it started following me after i walked away uh-huh. like um i remember the great yeah cat. the cat just like started following me and then it like followed me all the way over and it just like it sat with us and it was like comforting it was like weird it was like a comforting type of like did you pet it no one really pet it it just kind of like that's good sat down and then we gave it water, and it started drinking the water, and it started eating chips. And it was just <laughs> weird. It was, like, following us around, but it was, like, a comforting type of, like, animal just to have because we were kind of freaking out. But we are glad you were okay. Thank you. Yeah. But I feel like I – oh, my God. This is one thing I took from you, the mm. story of the Mori. Story of the Mori. I never forgot that you told me that, like, you in high school. Yeah. I love that. Anyway, um, mm-hmm. is that people pleasing is just not, it's not okay. And it, yeah. I feel like I've learned not to, like, I don't know, feel so negatively towards it. Like, in therapy, like, my therapist always says to me like you have to embrace these things that you kind of feel like are negative things about yourself before you can like really try and change them or improve on them you know because to an extent people pleasing really isn't that bad of a thing unless you're like abusing it you know like people pleasing can be good because you can like help someone in a time of need like 
or you can sense when things are wrong with people or when people need help and stuff like that so it can be good it's like a very humane thing to be like a people pleaser I guess because you just care so much for others and it's good that you're not like I don't know so like emotionally detached from people that you're just like oh whatever I don't care what they think you know but at the same time it can have like an abuse side of it where it's like okay you're putting people before yourself like too much you know um so I feel like it's not entirely a bad thing but it's just like in moderation yeah Yeah. everything in moderation cake Mm -hmm. people (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um okay oh not being extreme but consistent okay (laughs) um I feel that people with mental health struggles can relate to this. Mm -hmm. That when you get depressed or you have some sort of like down moment, you don't, you're not productive, you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. And then when you start to feel a bit better, you'll try and do everything and like do it perfectly and like Mm -hmm. all that. But what I think one of the a big key is is to really just try and get yourself to do small things every day Mm -hmm. because okay you don't brush your teeth once a week like as humans like we shouldn't really do that Mm -hmm. you don't do that you don't shower like once in your life and you're done you yeah. do it you do like w- one quick one every day or like have a spa night or something just if you can get if you can talk the depression and anxiety down to do something small every day it's gonna lead to something big because mm. sometimes we have those days where we do nothing and mm-hmm. then we'll have a day where we like do too much yeah and like overextend ourselves yes. because we're feeling good and yes. then we're just like ah for the rest of mm-hmm. the week yeah yeah or like say you have a moment where like you hate your body or something and so you don't eat mm-hmm. and then the next day you're like well i didn't eat and i'm really hungry so i can eat a lot today yeah Ooh, binge eating yes mm. or like we this is very embarrassing and I'm putting myself out there but me and Kayla talked about it like before we started like especially in high school I would shower like once or twice a week Mm -hmm. and I would be like okay I need to scrub everything I need to shave everything Mm -hmm. wash everything and then like the rest of the day is not and feel really sad or like I don't know like you're worthy to do things consistently Yes. Ooh, Ooh, I love that word. Worthy. worthy. Because you are. You like, you like owe it to yourself. Yes. Like you were saying, like being your own mother. Yes. Like showing up for yourself yes. in that way. Yeah. You're the only person that can show up for mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like no one else is going to like do all of that for you. Like you have to. You have to love yourself enough to do it. And it's, I feel like, I feel like self-love can become such a, like, a buzzword. Because people are just like, self-love means, um, I don't know, like, showering myself with gifts. Or, like, doing a face mask. Or, like, working out. Or, like, I don't know, like... People have so many different definitions of, like, what self-love is. But I feel like when it really comes down to it, like, especially for people with mental health issues, it's, like, really just the simple things, like you say, like, having a clean space, cleaning your body, feeding yourself. Like, that's the bare minimum of, like, anything ever. Can I say something that changed my perspective? Mm -hmm. Self-care especially on like tiktok or um youtube like women which i love to watch do Mm -hmm. like self-care sunday like a full routine of like trying this new face mask i bought this new robe like Mm -hmm. just like what you said but self-care i learned is 
actually doing things that are the ugliest. Yeah. Self-care is actually not pretty. Ooh. <laughs> and I have to clap to that. <laughs> oh. Like, um, taking your antidepressant mm-hmm. every day mm-hmm. at this at, at around the same this, time. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's self care. Yeah. Not your new clay mask. Uh huh. Yeah. That's like a little thing. That yeah. You can do for yours. That's it's like, an accessory to yes, self care. Self care is the ugly stuff. Mm-hmm. Like cleaning out your drunk drunk your junk drawer that's like full and giving you anxiety like yeah you know or making amends with someone like that's like that or (laughs) yeah it's the ugly stuff yes making amends with someone oh Oh, Uh, that's like one of the ugliest forms of self-care but you or having to cut someone off yes even more so yeah Ooh, for real. Cause we're, I feel like we're always like, we're always like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna block her, or him. Uh-huh. But then we also have to realize like, there's also some people that I have to go to and say sorry to. Yes, yes. Ooh. <laughs> poetry, poetry in motion right now. <laughs> we love it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just like still hitting me. Self care is the ugly thing. Yes. Like, we always find those things as a burden. Mm -hmm. Like, remember when you were talking about finding a new car insurance? Yeah. Finding the best one for you and your budget, that's self-care. Even though it was a drag. And I'm like, oh, I have to learn all of these stupid insurance terms and what's a deductible and what's (laughs) my insurance rate and how many quotes can I, you know, it's like all the stupid, like, adulting, whatever, but that's self-care, like, making sure that... I have insurance, so if anything happens to my car or to me, like, I have something to back me, something to support me financially, so then I don't have to worry about, like, paying extra bills, and, like, also, it's illegal in Florida to drive without (laughs) car insurance, so, like, not being worried about, like, being pulled over and not having insurance and getting a ticket and, like, all of those, yes, like, yes oh my gosh like that is self-care and you know I don't I haven't always seen it as self-care for myself exactly but for other people I'll be like what are you doing like you have to take care of yourself like but I don't see it that way for me like I don't know just like making sure that you have like all of your papers in order or going to the doctor or going to the dentist or like paying paying your bills or paying like if you have a speeding ticket pay your speeding ticket so like everything is just straight there like I've always seen those things as like self-care for other people and like what are you doing you need to like take care of that so then nothing happens to you like you don't have to be held accountable for those things but I've never seen it as self-care for me. I'm just like, oh, it's another thing that I have to do. Yes. Yeah. Or say like, um, you I have been like avoiding your oil change or whatever. If you yeah. keep avoiding it, mm-hmm. that's gonna lead to like your engine blowing, mm-hmm. and that's gonna cost way more. Mm-hmm. So like, if you get your oil change, be like, yay me. Yes, and it feels so good when yes. you actually do get it done because you're just like wow I don't have to like worry about it anymore like the air in my car the AC I ended up like recharging my AC myself like I YouTubed it I learned how to do it and I just followed the steps and sure it was trial and error and it took me a while to like figure out how to do it but I figured it out and then after it was done and the AC was cool and it was like cold in my car yeah after the (laughs) AC was like cold in my car I was like oh my gosh, I'm so happy that I finally freaking did that because it, like, it took forever for me to just, like, come around to it. And now every time I get in my car and I turn on the AC, I'm like, you did that. I did that. that. (laughs) I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And it gives you, like, a sense of self and, like, Mm -hmm. and then I feel like once you start doing those self-care things, then when you get that done, then you can worry about, like, bringing someone else in your life like a yeah. relationship yes yes 
<laughs> so good. You're speaking such good words really? today. Thank yeah. You. Well, on that note, <laughs> I think we should wrap it up. But um, did you have any any lingering thoughts or words you wanted to share with the people? Um, like no one, none of us know what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Life is like scary and weird. Just like if roll with it as best as you can. Yeah. And like just be like, f it. Sometimes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I agree. F it. Yeah. Yeah. And. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh my gosh, of course. And you're welcome back anytime. This was so much freaking fun. Um, I take Zell. <laughs> <laughs> her cash app Cat. would be below. <laughs> Venmo. <laughs> buy her a coffee. <laughs> I feel like people say that a lot. They're like, if you want to buy me a coffee. Oh, really? Then, yeah. Yeah, people seriously like podcasts and stuff. People do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll I'll plug her information below <laughs> and she's starting up her content creation journey, okay, mm-hmm. very soon. Makeup and skin by Brie, okay. But we might be changing the name. But we might yes. be changing the name. We might have a rebrand. Probably. Yeah. Ninety nine percent sure. <laughs> she's it's a like, little long. <laughs> she's like, We're having a rebrand, yeah. okay, one hundred percent. before it even starts. <laughs> <laughs> but I will plug her social medias and everything below. Thank you for being on Thank the podcast and Ali. sharing your words of wisdom, okay? Um, and I will talk to you all later. Don't be a stranger. Bye! Bye.